Dr. Dixit, welcome to the Ember Meeting. Thank you. I want to go back a little bit. Your parents were physicians and you actually grew up in Kenya. Uh, and I wanted to know what impact that had on your early scientific uh, career. Well, I, as you said, they, we lived in a small town in Kenya. My parents were uh, both physicians who were in general practice. They ran a small clinic. It was uh, incredibly busy. Uh, they'd see uh, very sick individuals. Uh, most of them had infectious disease. Uh, many were uh, quite effectively treated with antibiotics. And that uh, always had an impression on me, the sort of good work they were doing, uh, the ability of essentially reviving somebody who came at death's door. Did your family encourage you to pursue medicine or were you interested in science from a very early age? Uh, my parents had uh, bought me this uh, series of books from uh, Time Life on, uh, on the scientists and, and their work and that book influenced me. I, I found that the work that was being done, and you remember this is the view of a 10 year old, but I thought it was, uh, they were exploring new territory, they were discoverers, they were discovering things. And I thought it would be fascinating to be a discoverer, an explorer, you know. So, so tell us a little bit about the discoveries. They, they took place in the 1990s and basically you put in place um, the events that took place for program cell death? Uh, well, in the 1990s, uh, we became interested in cell death. The problem was how do you study it uh, biochemically? Because you can induce cell death uh, by m many ways, but none of which are biochemically amenable. What happened was that Shigi Nagata and Dave Goodell uh, had described members of the TNF receptor family, TNF receptor and FAS, mm -hmm. that if you engage these receptors, you got cell death. Now that was a handle, a biochemical handle. You could now take a receptor and ask what was downstream. The results were very surprising. What had happened was that uh, we could engage the death pathway by stimulating these receptors, but what was downstream was a complete mystery. But around that time, Bob Horowitz's lab had identified SED3 as a protease that was a component of the death pathway in the worm, and this made us wonder whether an equivalent activity may exist in mammals that was responsible for death receptor induced. You like to change direction quite regularly. I think I, I see this as a, a theme of your research career. Is that correct? I, I do. I, I think it's because uh, I sometimes wonder if I have adult uh, attention deficit disorder. I, uh, uh, one of the problems I face is I have a, a low bar for excitement. I get excited by uh, a lot of research and it doesn't have to be biology. It could be superconductivity, it could be, you know, I just get, I just, anything where you're discovering something new, uh, the, the funding of basic research, the quest for knowledge, though I think that's a common human trait. We all want to know the unknown. We all have a, a, an intrinsic desire to know about the world we live in, uh, to know about the universe, but uh, it's only in certain countries where uh, one is afforded that luxury of being able to pursue one's curiosity. So it is an enormous privilege. And are you changing direction again? Um, um, I probably will uh, change direction uh, a bit. I, I think a question that fascinated me for some time was a question that a graduate student brought into the lab 10 years ago. She said, why are the central regulators of photomorphogenesis Cop and debt, central regulators of photomorphogenesis in plants that are responsible for plant life and therefore life on our planet. Why are they conserved in you and I? Why are they conserved in vertebrates? Like, we don't undergo photomorphogenesis. I, that was a question that intrigued me. You know, like, there wasn't a literature one could refer to. You had to now explore, you had to say, what are these proteins doing in mammalian systems? And I think this next year, there's going to be, hopefully, a series of papers 
that speak to the function of these proteins in, in mammals. And I'm quite excited about them coming out. Dr. Dixit, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.